Hello everyone, welcome back. It's Space Engineers plus me, episode 52. I'm an Igneous and today, it's one for the ages. It's a solution to a problem that's existed since the beginning of time, or at least since I started playing the game. The problem is the issue that we have when we're trying to, when we've got, say for example, a bunch of ore that we want to process, and we've got a bunch of refineries and a bunch of arc furnaces, and we want to distribute that ore amongst those different machines equally, so that each machine is occupied and we get things processed as fast as we possibly can. Now the game doesn't allow for anything like that in its native state. There's no block that you can use, you can just place it, that will equally distribute amongst different machines or different containers. You can get scripts that people have written that do the deed for you. There's nothing wrong with that, but for me I wanted to come up with a, or see if I could come up with a solution with what the vanilla game gives us without having to rely on any external sources to make it work and we've done it it's simple it's reliable and it's damn near elegant and most importantly it does the job that's that's kind of the key so we're going to take a, a relatively detailed look it's not complicated but i want to take a relatively detailed look so you can understand how things work if you want specific breakdowns of what instructions to put in the different timer blocks those will be in the information box below the video so you have a quick rest quick reference down there if you need it without having to come back to the video and try and find the specific section where I was talking about this specific topic you can just take a look in the information box below the video that'll be there for you so what we've got here basically is a very very simple setup uh, it's kind of color-coded if if you look at all the gray stuff those are basically things that you can ignore with the diff the uh, only two exceptions being the very large cargo container right here that's actually got a bunch of stone in it that we're going to be using to demonstrate how this works you can set up the conveyor sorters to pull whatever you want out of the cargo container that's not a big deal and I didn't realize until just now that this conveyor sorter is gray it should be blue could be it's a very important part of this whole system but just keep that in mind. So when I'm saying all the blue stuff is important for this system, this is included. <laughs> all right. The orange blocks are blocks that you could substitute for refineries or arc furnaces. In this case, I'm just using small cargo containers because, again, it's just to demonstrate how the whole thing works. When push comes to shove, the system doesn't care where it's putting the stuff. It's just as long as the game will let it put stuff from this conveyor sorter into this object, it's fine. So keep that in mind. The orange is the analog for the, the processing or whatever you want to use. The system itself basically uses a bunch of conveyor sorters that are turned on and off at specific times and specific sequences to control the flow of items coming out of this container, which is controlled by these three conveyor sorters here. So for each conveyor sorter, we have a timer block. You don't necessarily have to have the timer block close to each conveyor sorter. Once you're familiar with the system and how it works, you don't even have to have them in line of sight of one another as long as they're on the same grid. It's fine. And we've also got a pair of conveyor sorters that are controlling these ones here. We're going to be looking at those last once we get everything else sorted out. So the goal here, you can see, we've got 10 conveyor sorters. Uh, and they're numbered starting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. They're basically designed to kind of represent a loop of sorts. And what we want to do is we want to send materials into this container, then this one, then this one, then this one, then this one, all the way down here. And then when we get to this end, we come back up here and we do it again until there's nothing left to distribute. It's basically the whole idea of how the thing works. So the way that happens is I'll give you that this is the first set of commands that is basically duplicated through all of these timer blocks and all you're changing is the ID for the conveyor sorters and for the next timer block. It'll make sense momentarily. So we start at number one. First thing you do when we start a timer block is there's a three second pause. And that's very important because that three seconds is what's allowing this part down here to do what it does without having things go wonky on it. So it starts a three second timer. When it gets to the bottom of that timer, first thing it does is it turns off the conveyor sorter previous to this timer blocks conveyor sorter. So in this case, because this is number one, the previous one is number 10. So it turns this one off. If it's already off, it stays off. If it's on, it turns off. Then it turns on the corresponding conveyor sorter. So now this one would be on. And then it calls this timer block here and the process repeats. There's a three second delay. 
Once that's up, it turns off the previous one, turns on the current one, starts this timer block. This timer block waits three seconds, turns off the previous one, turns on the current one, calls this timer block. Very, very simple, right? There's nothing complicated at all. Three second delay, turn off, turn on, call this timer block. At this point, basically what this is doing, and we'll actually, you'll see it working as we go because the arrows will change color to show which conveyor sorters are on. The red ones are obviously off, the yellow ones will be on. You'll be able to see that very, very clearly, but that's what's cycling everything around so that when we do that in conjunction with what's happening here, all of the materials that are coming through the system are being very, very efficiently, uniformly distributed amongst the various different containers in lots of 10,000 liters, which is the smallest that I could get. That's why we're using the conveyor sorters here instead of anything else, is because the smallest amount that I could break it down into was 10,000 liters. And you'll notice at different weights for different kinds of materials, as long as it's 10,000 liters, that's what it's going by, because that's what basically is the maximum allowable to fill this thing. And that's what we're going with. So the one thing that we didn't mention, and we did this just for the sake of simplicity, is that just before this timer block calls this one, it also activates the first sending block here, the sending timer block here. So this guy, when we start him, he waits three seconds, turns this guy off, turns this guy on, starts this guy, then calls this guy. This guy waits three seconds, turns this guy off, turns this guy on, starts this guy, calls this guy. So we've added a step relative to what we first described, but it's still very, very simple. We're basically controlling which one of these is on and off, and then sending the instruction for this guy to start, which is gonna control these guys and get them to do what they do. And then by the time these guys are done, we've started the next guy who's gonna start turning things off and get it ready for the next run. Now what these guys do, very, very simply, is when this first one is started, it basically turns this guy on. If it's already on, it stays on. If it's off, it turns on. This guy, same thing, turns it on. If it's off, it turns on. If it's on, it stays on. Then it waits, sorry, as soon as it's done that, it's turned both of these on. It calls this one here, which waits two seconds. These ones wait three. This one waits two seconds. As soon as this guy's two second wait is done, it turns this guy off, turns this guy on. Now what that's basically doing is encapsulating the materials in a way that we're not able to pull more than a small amount through at a time and we're controlling what that is. So basically what happens when these two guys are on is that this guy is gonna pull from the cargo container and stuff it into this guy and that's as far as it can go because this guy is off. When we get to this guy over here after it waits two seconds to make sure that this guy is properly stuffed, it turns this one off so that it can't pull any more materials from the large cargo container. It turns this guy on, which will take the stuff from here and send it through the network here to whichever one of these guys is turned on and it gets deposited in the block that's storing whatever, your arc furnaces, your, your refineries, or in our case, the small containers. That's the system. So this little three block system here is very, very key to actually having some control over how much material you're moving at a time. If you were to just use a single conveyor sorter with this system in place, it would basically fill up each one of these small containers each time one of these switched over and then that would be it. You would have control over which containers filled up first, but you wouldn't be able to distribute things equally and maybe get something in each container before uh, everything was done. That's kind of the goal. That's the, the setup is control how much is coming into the system at once. Control which containers are receiving each individual batch that's coming from here. And then just run it around in an endless loop for as long as you want to distribute things the way that you want them distributed. That's it in a nutshell, but it's a lot more interesting if we can actually watch it working. So that's exactly what we're going to do now. Now this first pass through, we're just gonna let you see the, uh, the, the lights cycling on the conveyor sorters, just so it's very, very clear exactly what's happening. 
and then we'll take a look at uh, what's happening in the inventories themselves when we start the system with a fresh start. So first thing we'll do is we'll go on. You can see in the top left hand corner, first one's on calls the second one three second delays first one's off second one's on three second delay third one's on second one's off three second delay and it just moves around it's not fast you could probably reduce the amount of time that it's waiting to maybe two seconds i didn't really want to try and push it it's not tuned for efficiency and i'm okay with that the whole idea is primarily just to get the damn thing working so in addition to the cycling around of the different conveyor sorters feeding the inventories, refineries, arc furnaces, or whatever, you can also see the three conveyor sorters that are working to um, basically uh, create the bundle of whatever material you're transferring. It starts off with the first two active, feeds the one in the middle, turns the first one off, turns the, th the third one on, so that it can push the materials that are in the middle conveyor sorter into the storage system, then it turns the third one off and turns the first one back on again and the whole process starts again. It stuffs the one in the middle, turns the first one off, third one on, passes it through, and repeat. It's not a complicated system. It's really, really simple and straightforward. And even if it's a little bit difficult to kind of wrap your head around at the very beginning, once you get something in place and up and running, there's no limit to how many different things you can have uh, functioning in this sorting system and how elaborate the sorting system can be based on whatever that you want. It's a little bit expensive to set up relative to just simply having conveyor tubes and conveyor blocks attached to your different machines and kind of feeding it through with one conveyor sorter deciding what's allowed through. But if you're wanting to save yourself that little bit of time and have really, really fast, efficient machine setups, the ability to sort the stuff, really uh, a time saver. So what we're going to do now is we're going to reset the whole thing and then we'll let you see what's happening in the inventories as the whole thing is working. All right, so everything's reset. All the stone is back in the large cargo container. What we want to do is turn on the system, then quickly jump into the inventory and filter it so that we can see just the small cargo containers where the stone is going. In order to do that, we'll do that. Inventory. Small cargo. So now it's filtered. We can see just the small cargo containers and we can see stone is going into the containers. It's not necessarily going to put them in order. The important thing to notice is you're seeing 27K by the stone. That's the weight. It's sorting by volume because that's the actual space that each container can hold when we're talking about the conveyor sorters so that they hold a maximum of 10,000. So it's sending them out in allotments of 10,000 liters, which works out to 27K stone. And eventually, now we're back down to the beginning, it's 54.1k. Now, I can't tell, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It looks like three of them aren't getting any stone, and I don't know if that's a lag issue or if I set them up improperly, but you get the idea. It's, see, we're going around the second time, they're each getting another 27k worth. But that gives you enough of an idea to understand that things are working, whether it's a lag issue or whether it's a setup issue, I don't know, but it's not that important. What matters is, again, the explicit instructions for the timers, for the conveyor sorters to cycle them around, and also for the two timers here, the two timer blocks here, to manage these conveyor sorters are in the information box below the video. Next video, we're going to be back on the Atlas. We're going to be making some sort of progress. I don't know specifically what that will be, but it will be progress. If you want to be notified when I add future videos on ships that I'm building, systems that I'm making, all the other things I could be doing in this and other games, you can subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on social media. Links for social media are always in the information box below the video. Feel free to leave your comments and feedback. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.